kind of the key here with this turnovers versus steals comparison between these two teams. They like to get the ball on the defensive end, and we'll see today if they can take over Pitt. Idell and Lawrence to take the tip, and we are off here in Pittsburgh. Pitt will start in possession. It'll be Washington's again at the point. They run a couple guards today in her and Battle up top, both sort of in that point guard role. Yeah, it was nice to see Aaron Battle get her first start as a freshman Saturday. Um, and she did a really good job, eight points coming off. And we'll see how she can add to this guard play for Pitt. Lisa Malcolm coming off a very good game as well. And this is the first shot of the game there for the Panthers as Coppin State takes possession. The starters for them, Staples, Hammond, Blackstone, Buckner, and Lawrence out there to get things started. Buckner down low, Lawrence. Working on Iadell, back to the outside, it's Hammond. And there's your first bucket of the game. And just like that, they do something we talked about, Zach, in pregame that they don't normally do very well is shoot that three ball, only shooting around 24% on the season coming into this game, but puts a quick three on the board for them. King, good pass down, looking for battle. Iadell there on the glass, and she gets the bank to go. And Rapalucci Iadell has been a bit of a surprise so far this season for the Panthers. The best offensive rebounder so far in the country as Pitt going the other way now. Malcolm fouled on the shot. Yeah, I like Rapalucci Iadell coming from a junior college. You never know kind of what you're going to expect, how they're going to adjust to D1 basketball. And she's coming and let, started right where she left off at her junior college last year. Averages a double-double and so far this season doing that as well for the Panthers. Nice to see there start off with some pressure on Coppin State. Averaging a full seven offensive rebounds per game. That's tops in the country as Malcolm makes her first of two. This is a, a fascinating trajectory here for Iadell. Coming from Spain, going to Indian River State Junior College where she averaged 14 points per game and then now to Pitt. Kind of a lot of flights for her, but she's really found a home here at Pitt, it seems like. Yeah, and we love to have her. It's always, obviously, last year we had a great strength in Leah Toucan off to a great start as well so far, but the combination of two of them under the boards bodes really well for Pitt. Buckner gets down low there and gets two. Coppin State back up one early. Here's Washington's. Gets that one taken away from her. Nice play defensively there by Blackstone. Still a scramble for it along the sideline here. And it'll go Pitt's way. So Marley Washington's back in the starting lineup for the Panthers. The sophomore from Fairmont, Virginia. Had 11 points in that Yale game, but in those three games since, just six. So trying to get back on track and are her and really a lot of the guards for the Panthers who struggled a bit as of late after that first game. Yeah, we saw Marley struggle a little bit in that West Virginia game. Obviously kind of a homecoming for her. A little bit of nerves got the best of her. But just getting the strength as her coming into her sophomore season now. Obviously last year played a more coming off the bench role. So now looking to build that confidence as a leader on this floor. Coach Verdi talked about her at the start of the season about being one of the leaders on the team, one of the two team captains entering this campaign. On a roster with a lot of turnover. Down low now, Lawrence gets that one to roll in. Layla Lawrence, the forward from Louisville, Texas, played at Texas A&M Commerce during her first two years of college hoops. Yeah, she's got nice size to her, gets up the court really, really well and is strong underneath the basket. Almost averaging a double-double coming into this game. Staples off to Hammond, working on Aislin Malcolm. 10 on the shot clock. Outside three ball from Blackstone rolls in. Like I said, Zach, we're eating our work here yeah. with this three ball, but that was great work around the key in the perimeter for Coppin State. You saw Lawrence had a chance. She might have been able to go with it under the hoop, but she took the extra pass, kicked it outside. One more rotation, a nice three by Blackstone. Talking about moving around. Blackstone's played at Syracuse, North Carolina a and CCBC Essex, and now you're at Coppin State in her collegiate career. Yeah, this um, Coppin State team brought in four players from that CCBC Exus team who did really well last year, had a great season. So looking to all four of those players looking to continue that now here at Coppin State. Yeah, never a bad thing, Sarah, when you bring in four players from a team who won 36 of their 37 games. So. 
trying to bring those winning ways here to Coppin State. Yeah, you're talking about the success and just the familiarity. Yeah. You know, you're bringing four of those players that just played together a whole last season. You normally don't get that bringing in transfers. That's a lot of these teams start off slow when they come in from the transfer portal because they have so many different pieces that they need to work together. Another offensive rebound there for Iadell. Can't get the rebound to go in, though, and Coppin State regains possession here with a six-point lead here early in the first quarter. Coppin State on a 7-0 run over the last two minutes of play. Blackstone again along the baseline. Can't get that one to go, but she'll go to the line for two. And back to her. She has been a really strong presence here so far for Coppin State. Has 15 points or more in each of her last four games and had a season-high 22 last time out against Florida International. Yes, yeah, she's showing quick that she's coming in as a leader of this Coppin State squad. Nice take to the hoop she had there. Just a little pullback jumper, drawing the foul in transition. Never a bad thing when you can get a transfer to immediately average over 16 points per game. That's good for the team lead. And her shoe game is pretty strong, too. <laughs> Battle the other way now for the missed free throw. Here's King. Jumper. No. Pitt needs to be a little bit more patient on offense, just like we watched in the previous possession with Blackstone having that three ball. They took the time, a couple, several passes around the key to find the open player, and I think Pitt needs to kind of do the same on offense in their end. Lawrence driving, trying to go down low with Blackstone. Can't find her, though, and Pitt goes the other way with numbers. Malcolm in transition. Nice. Layup is good. Great pass there by Battle. Good. Awareness to look up, see that she, and it was a tight pass too. Malcolm had someone trailing right behind her, but she fed it in and Aslan went up strong. Off the rim and out from Blackstone and really going end to end here early on. Battle with five and a half to go here in quarter number one. Here's Malcolm. to Bella Perkins, who goes down low to the block. Countered strongly there. Three on the shot clock for her. Takes a low percentage shot there and comes up well short. Bella Perkins, a fascinating story so far in this early season for the Panthers. A career-high 21 points against Yale, but has just 21 points in her three games since. Yeah, a big transfer coming in for Coach Tori Verdi. And we've seen she's great on the defensive side, right? She's a chippy player. She adds that energy that this pit squad definitely needs and rebounding too you're some that's great coming from a guard having someone that can come on the court and almost average 10 rebounds a game in the guard position 10-6 ball game halfway through the first quarter here in pittsburgh we'll be back after this Let's 
six ball game here in Pittsburgh. Coffin State coming out strong out of the gate here on Kids Day at the Peterson Event Center. Got some field trips from elementary schools from around the area here to enjoy the game on this Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, it's always a nice thing they do here. This is the 13th year they've done the school day promotion, and it's just nice to see these kids Thanksgiving break getting out of the classroom and getting to see some D1 basketball. Those holidays in classrooms are always a good time with Christmas and Thanksgiving. It's always, you know, getting out to enjoy a college basketball game here at the Peterson Event Center. Blackstone continues to struggle here from the line. One for four so far in the game. 11-6 lead now here for Coppin State and another turnover there. Off the glass and out there from Buckner. Eddie able to gather the rebound and try and slow things down a little bit on offense maybe. Yeah, we see Jayla Jordan checking into the game. Kind of the theme of this pit team, right? Yale game, they came out really strong, looked really good. Jayla Jordan coming off, having a great game there, but been quiet ever since. So we'll see how she does matching up there in the key. Here's Perkins. King making a move now in the key, and she's got that one to go. She loves, loves that little jumper. She's money anytime she's in that paint with that pullback jumper. And obviously she's a four, so, you know, the concept of going strong into the basket. But for Leah Tu King, that little jumper is money every time for her. Leah Tu King has that unique ability to sort of create space down low. A lot of those bigs you'll see have trouble being that mobile and moving around. Leah Tu King does a really nice job of that. And as this one goes from Jenkins, her first two of the night. Perkins quickly the other way now. She goes baseline outside to Malcolm, who gives to Battle the three. Yes! There's Aaron Battle. Had her first career start against Duquesne. Comes into this one with 18 points in her last two games. Yeah, I like the presence there by Malcolm. Nice little baseline drive there to find Battle wide open for the three. Definitely showing some confidence so far early in this season in her sophomore year. Battle the freshman, a highly accomplished player at Camden Catholic High School where she was a McDonald's All-American nominee. And there's nearly 17 points per game there down in New Jersey. Three here, that one goes from Staples. So there's your counter from Coppin State. And they're back up five. Perkins and Pitt looking for an answer. Left hand looking down low for King and a charge called there on Perkins. Nice job defensively there by Buckner to keep her feet set and get possession back. Yeah, really nice job there. It was a good take by Perkins, finding Leah to open, but just a little too strong coming into the paint there. Washington's back on for the Panthers as Gray checks in here for the Eagles. Yeah, see, this is what I like about the lineup out on the floor for Pitt now with Perkins out there because obviously you have three guards and two forwards, but with Bella Perkins, how she is on the glass, you have basically, you gain another forward on the floor in her. Perkins again working in transition. She's fouled on the shot there and will go to the line. As you mentioned earlier, Perkins, someone who plays really aggressively on both sides of the ball. You see her really play with her tail on fire, it seems like, going down the court a few times so far in this one. Yeah, and I like Pitt there taking it up the floor in transition, right? This Copen State team, really good defensive team holding teams to just over 60 points a game. Pitt taking the opportunity to take the ball up the court and Bella Perkins taking it strong to the hoop, nails the first three throw. Perkins, the junior from Fairfax, Virginia, transferred from USC last year. You see that high level of play too. She played high school in one of the best basketball conferences in the country in the WCAC in the DC area. Played against players like Azzy Fudd and others who have had a lot of success at the D1 level. Three here, off the mark there from Blackstone. Coppin State's first missed three-point attempt of the game. Comes with two minutes left here in this first quarter. Yeah, and like we said, coming in the game, only shooting 25% from the three, but the three balls that they have shot have been pretty wide open, right? That was the first one that they took that was maybe off the first or second pass of an offensive series. The other threes that they did shoot, they worked the ball around the key for the wide open shot and it paid off for them. This will blows here. Possession stays with Coppin State. Going off of Washington's. 
Here's Gray. Outside, that one almost trickles in off the deflection, but Petty able to get the rebound. Down five here at the tail end of this first quarter of play. Jordan down low now, tied up by Gray on the low block, and she'll go to the line. Or excuse me, that'll go the other way now with Coppin State, so really another great. defensive stand there. Yeah, really great defense there by Gray. Nice look by Leah Tu, seeing Jayla Jordan cut into the basket, but just a lower feed on that ball. I would like to see Leah Tu get that ball kind of up in the air there, out of the way of guard play with Gray there, obviously getting the ball in her, you know, midsection. Gray able to tie Jayla Jordan up before she can go up with the ball. Gray, the redshirt junior, another one of these players that come over from CCBC Essex. Where they played under former Coppin State player Tariq Cephas. Those four players having a major impact so far this season for Coppin State. Lawrence gets her own rebound on the three. And that one goes out of play. Yeah, we see Coach Woods subbing pretty often so far in this game, getting a little bit depth in his bench. They're without Angel Jones today due to an injury, so go into his bench a little bit more and these are this is the time of the year these non-conference matchups to get your bench in the game see what you have so you know in a game people are going to get in foul trouble injuries do happen throughout the season see who you can go to in a pinch Blackstone called for the travel hit with no field goals in the last two and a half minutes of play they're four for 11 in the game Perkins trying to change that. Nice pass down low to Washington. It's reverse layup goes. Really nice looking play there from the Panthers. Cuts it to three. Beautiful execution there. Guard to guard. Like to see Perkins and Washington take over there. Really nice over under by Washington to get this pit scoring, scoring drought out. Blackstone working on King. Drive to the basket and she's fouled. You see the reverse layup again here from Washington. Creating some space down low. You don't see her go down there too much, but athleticism allows her to get some space and gets the two there. Yeah, a really nice feed there by Perkins. Seeing that Washington's had the opportunity for a basket, and Washington's, like you said, given herself the space to go underneath with it. Blackstone to the line again. She's one for four on the day, making two for five after she makes the first of two. goes as well. So two for two from the line for Blackstone. And Richard Jr. from Harrisburg. Back in her home state. Wouldn't necessarily call it a homecoming. Harrisburg's a good three and a half hours away, but Jordan the three. Off the glass and out from her. 20 to go now in the quarter. Shot clock off for Washington. and Pitt will try and work the last shot. Yeah, nice job there by Pitt. Offensive rebounds has been a talking point for them so far. And it's showing today getting those second chance opportunities are huge in this game. Jordan pressured at the top. Off now to King, who's going to look for the last shot here, but won't get it off. Out to Perkins, that doesn't go, but it didn't matter because the horn sounded. To end the first quarter of play. Wait for that second or third opportunity, being really efficient. And we've seen both these teams, stingy defense, not allowing a lot of points per game. So we see a lot of transition play moving pretty quick up and down the court. I'd like to see Pitt be a little bit more patient on the offensive end, um, but hopefully this second quarter they can come back. Pitt misses their first shot at quarter number two, brings him to five for 14 on the afternoon, still trying to get to 40% there from the field. So little struggles early on again. Five turnovers again for Pitt in that first quarter of play. That's an issue that Coach Verdi's talked about. They've Turned the ball 18 times, over 18 times in three of their first four games this season. And all three of those have been losses. Lawrence, three, no. Off the rim out to Bella Perkins. Who hands to Washington, it's the other way. Yeah, and turnovers is something that's been kind of a fault for this pit team for several years, not just in the Tory Verde era. So trying especially Coming up, obviously, you're finishing off non-conference schedule, looking to get into ACC play soon. That's something that they want to get their guards conditioned, comfortable, and ready to go. Battle from outside. That one won't go. 
And Pitts 0 for 2 to start the second quarter. Lawrence. Nice little half jumper there from inside the paint. She's got her fifth and sixth points of the afternoon. Tied for the leading score in the game now with Blackstone. Seven point lead now for Coppin State, their largest of that afternoon as Perkins misses again from beyond the arc. It's getting their opportunities. Last two possessions, they both had really good looks at three balls, but just couldn't finish. Perkins struggled mightily against George Mason. Only two points there, but rebounded against Duquesne with 11. They're going to continue on that today. Blackstone, left-handed layup doesn't go. Yeah, we saw in the Duquesne game, just as similar in the Yale game that she played in, coming in big in the final seconds of the game. In the Yale game, obviously, getting the win for Pitt. Couldn't quite come up in the Duquesne game to a questionable travel call at the end of the game. <laughs> but Bella Perkins showing early on that she can be a leader in big moments for this Pitt squad. Jordan three short. She gets her own rebound, driving inside now, and gets the roll in to just miss there. Still a seven-point lead for Coppin State. Trying to open it up here in the second quarter of play. Down though, that one turned over. Washington's now to battle. Perkins doubled there in the corner. Jordan continuing to stay on the outside, misses the three again there. That's not really her game, is it, Sarah? No, and especially this pit team who, in the forward department, is lacking a little bit. You, we see Lauren Russ checking in for her first minutes of the game. That's something that we, this pit squad needs Jayla Jordan to stay under that paint, work that key. She's got great size to her. So I'd like to see her take a little bit less threes and work that ball inside. Mentioned Lauren Rust in the game, the freshman from Canada, made her first career appearance last time out against Duquesne. How about this? Goes from Canada and then plays her high school ball in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Talk about a transition there. Reverse layup. Nice job again from Lawrence down low. She's got eight. I like seeing what we are seeing so far for Layla Lawrence. Strong player. Can show that she can shoot the ball from outside, shoot the jumper, but then also work the ball into the key as we see Leah Tukin make that nice jumper to get some much needed points on the board for Pitt. Leah Tu King now with four. Got two rebounds to go along as well. Tied for the leading score in the game for the Panthers with Malcolm. On the outside, it's Hammond, the three. One goes ironing out, and the rebound goes to Gabby Hutcherson, who checks in for her first minutes of the night. Washington's directing traffic at the top of the key now to Rust. Goes inside Malcolm, back out to Washington's. Nice passing from the Panthers. Hutcherson, the three, comes up short. Like you mentioned there, getting these open looks, but just not converting early on. Yeah, obviously shooting 28% from the field isn't ideal for this pit squad when you have Coffin State shooting how they're shooting from the three. I'll tell you what, they are really doing some work from the outside there. Now four for eight from beyond the arc. 10 for 18 in the game, and Coppin State is out to a 10-point lead here in the second quarter of play.
State up 10 here with just over five to go in the second quarter of play. Zach, give me Sarah Mac, or Johnson, excuse me, back from the Peterson Event Center. Pitt, a bit of a slow start for them from the field again, six for 21. And like we talked about, they're getting these open looks, but just not converting early on. Yeah, it's hard to see that 29% from the field goal because like you said, Zach, this second quarter, they got off to a good start, slowing, down, slowing it down a little bit on offense, working the ball around the key, waiting for that second, third chance look but just can't get it to fall in the basket. Here's King working on two Coppin State defenders. Get some open space, but can't get the bank to go. And here comes Coppin State with Gray again. Hammond off to Blackstone. Got some room from three, and she just misses off the back of the iron there. Out. The rebound goes back to Lawrence, though, and once again, Coppin State converts. Yeah, tough one there, rebounding-wise for Pitt. You had four Pitt players underneath the hoop there, yet Layla Lawrence is able to come right through, get that ball, and put it right back up. Travel there from Malcolm. Another turnover for the Panthers, and boy, I will tell you what, Layla Lawrence has been really impressive so far today. Five for seven from the field, 10 points, six rebounds, and we're not even halfway through the game yet. Yeah, coming into this game, shooting 52% from the field. So she shows if, if she gets the opportunity, it's going to go in the net. Lawrence with three double-doubles this season, one of just 17 active D1 players to accomplish the feat at this point in the season. Another three ball for Coppin State. I think now is the point where on the defensive end, Pitt needs to get a little bit tighter on those guards for Coppin State, getting wide, wide open three. So the amount you continue to shoot, they're going to go in, right? Coppin State does not look like a team that won eight games last year thus far. In their second season under head coach Jermaine Woods. Previously served as an associate coach, but a little bit of experience in the ACC for Coach Woods. Has served as an assistant at Wake for a number of years down there with the guards. Did a really nice job down there and gets the head coaching gig here at Coppin State now in his second season. Yeah, Coppin State playing fellow ACC um, Syracuse earlier in the year obviously not getting the result that coach Woods would like but like to see some of his ACC influence coming into play with his scheduling Blackstone to the line again she already has seven attempts has made four of them that one misses so she's now four for eight here's Hutcherson driving low block the fadeaway goes and that's a big one for Pitt needed something to go down here in the second quarter of play and they get it from Hutcherson yeah that's exactly what you like to see there Hutcherson nailing the basket on the offensive end of the court and then Pitt coming up with a big turnover there um, with Washington's on Blackstone in the corner Coppin say outscoring Pitt 13 to 4 here in the second quarter of play Score in the game is Lawrence with 10, followed by Hammond with 9. Washington's calls for the pick with Jordan, gets some space, leaves for Iadell. Off the ball, foul called there. And Coppin State regains possession. Pitt not doing the little things right so far today. Yeah, it's hard when seems when Leah Tukin, you right, you have that leader out on the court. She's been at Pitt for several years now, leading the team and rebounding in points per game. And with her on the bench, you could see a little bit um, of some struggles at Pitt seen as Corner State three. another three. Wow. Hammond now four for five from beyond the arc. She's got 12, and Coppin State extends their lead. Hammond. Perkins needs an answer. She's got it. Nice answer there by Bella Perkins. But back to Tiffany Hammond, someone that hasn't been really in the starting lineup at the start of the season for Coppin State, but with the injury to Angel Jones, making her return to the starting lineup and making her presence known. Another CCBCS <laughs> transfer on the squad. Hammond playing her first two seasons at Sacred Heart. Just didn't get consistent playing time there. And she banks the three. <laughs> Goodness gracious, five for six now from the field for Hammond, all from beyond the arc. And if I'm Hammond, I'm continuing to shoot that three ball, right? They're giving me the open look. She used the screen there to get a little bit off her off her man. And, you know, she's hot. Why not keep putting them up? Perkins. Here's Ayada. 
Jordan still playing there at the point. Nice dish down low to Ayadel. Really nice job there by Jayla Jordan looking down low. Ayadel getting boxed out on her man, putting it right back up for some much needed points for Pitt. And if you're Pitt, you got to start thinking about putting two players on number two and navy blue out there in the corner. Driving now Gray, looking for some space. Perkins, the strong defense there, goes back out to Staples. Driving Gray off the iron and out. Outside, thought Hammond might take another one there, but she pulls up and opts to pass instead. Down low, Jenkins, yes. Coppin State has made five of their last six from the field. And another foul on the Panthers turns it over again. That is their eighth turnover of the afternoon, and they are struggling here in the second quarter. Yeah, a couple offensive fouls there. You can see just frustration fouls, not what you like to see for this pit squad, especially with the, Copen, the way Copen State is shooting the ball, shooting 60% right now from the range, and don't want to turn it right back over in their hands. Almost full changes here for the Panthers. Battle back on along with Rust. Malcolm out as well. Pitt looking for something here. Being outscored 21 to nine in the second quarter with just over a minute and a half to play. Hammond off to Staples with some speed down low and she gets called for the charge there. Big play there from Lauren Russ to draw it and get the turnover for the Panthers. Yeah, good job there by Russ, leaving her man to come over and help Phil and take the charge. I'll tell you what, coming into today, didn't have Coppin State's 17-point lead in the second quarter on my bingo card, but they have come in and looked extremely strong on the road. Shooting 60% from the field. And this isn't a team that puts off a lot of points, no. right, Zach? They're only averaging 62 points per game, already at 41 here with a minute and a half left to go in this second quarter. Perkins on the pivot finds Russ at the free throw line who gets it poked away again. The swarming defense of Coppin State coming through again here with just under a minute left in quarter number two. Yeah, great job, great job there by Blackstone, knowing she can leave her man to double team Rust and getting the easy steal. Blackstone down low and the whistle blows for a travel. Picked up a couple of those now. Coach Woods telling his team to chill, relax a little bit. <laughs> Obviously up here big in the second quarter. No need to take that first chance shot. Now's the time where you work that ball around the key. Could have maybe kept the possession on their end for the remainder of the quarter, but now Pitt's gonna have the chance to score before the half. Malcolm driving through contact, gets the layup to go. She'll go to the line for one more. And Hazel Malcolm trying to get a little bit of momentum back here for Pitt before the break. Yeah, great job there by Malcolm, realizing that she had Blackstone beat and taking it strong to the hoop. Definitely what Pitt needed in this scenario. And she's just shown time and time again this season so far. Obviously last year as a freshman, getting off the bench and just some, some key situations, much needed three ball. But now getting this start for this Pitt squad and really showing some progress so far early on this season. That one goes for Malcolm to complete the three-point play. At her career-high 18 points a couple games ago against George Mason. She was 8 for 15 from the field. Shot clock off now for Coppin State. They'll work to get the last shot of this second quarter. Blackstone with 7. Off now to Gray. Back to Blackstone. Two seconds in one, Blackstone, the contested jumper, and she is fouled. That is a bad foul to take if you're the Panthers. Yeah, Coach Turry, not happy yes. with that. Not, not sure if he's not happy with the call or just the fact that Fallon, like you said, with .6 left to go, sending Blackstone to the line, which if there's a person you want to foul, Blackstone has shown so far today, not necessarily doing so well. Um, from the three free throw line, but don't just want to give them a chance at an opportunity here as she nails the first one. Blackstone up to eight points. Now five for nine from the free throw line. Drills them both. And Perkins, the half court shot off the rim. 
as time expires here in half number one where Jermaine Woods' squad coming on the road and leading 43 to seven over Pitt heading into halftime. Against Pitt. Here's Staples at the top. Guarded there by her fellow number one battle. Strong to the hoop and that's an offensive foul. So Pitt quickly gets a turnover here to start half number two. Coppin State in that first half of play, shooting 60% from the field, 15 for 25, including 58% from beyond the arc. Battle to King. Nice move to get free down low, and King's got her first two of the second half. She's up to six now in the afternoon. Here's Buckner to the outside with Blackstone. Another whistle blows and another offensive foul for Coppin State. Make that two on two possessions here in the second half. Yeah, great start there for the Pitt defense. Obviously wanting to slow down Coppin State coming into the half, shooting 60%. They've done that so far with two quick turnovers. Battle King, Washington's Iadell and Malcolm on the floor to start half number two for the Panthers. Here's Malcolm with speed around the outside and turns it over. Yeah, good look there passing it into Iadell, but she just couldn't get a handle on it. Here's Staples. Guarded up high there by Battle. Now Lawrence to the outside, corner three, Blackstone off the iron and out. Battle to Washington. Foul called off the ball. It'll be on Lawrence, it looks like. Or excuse me, Buckner. So three team fouls already for Coppin State here in this third quarter. And that's what we need to see. This pit team's been strong underneath the boards as we see Leah Two King take it strong and grab the and one. And that's what's been so strong for this pit team so far. And honestly, even the past couple of seasons has been the rebounding, has been the forward play. And you like to see there, Iadell being strong underneath the basket, drawing that, that foul on Coppin State and then right going back to it with Leah Two King. King, the strong finish there to bring her up to eight points. And it stays that way after she misses the back end of the and one. So it's still a 12 point lead for Coppin State. And if you're Pitt, you gotta come out thinking, okay, they're not gonna shoot 58% from the field again, but at the same time, you gotta start forcing the issue on defense a bit. I mean, they've been so good from beyond the arc. You gotta bring those guards out a little bit and pressure them a little bit. Right, and we've definitely seen that Pitt doing a really good job. As we saw there, Marley and Leah two switching. Obviously, that's not necessarily the matchup you want on the switch, but making sure that Coppin State isn't getting that wide open three. Corner three, Malcolm, got it. Hazel Malcolm cuts the deficit down to nine. And a timeout here from Coppin State with Jermaine Woods. And going into break here in the third quarter, 43-34 lead for Coppin State, Pitt trying to cut in.
back here in Pittsburgh. 43-34 lead here for Coppin State. Pitt trying to cut in a little bit in the second quarter. These two teams played in the season opener last year. Pitt won 56-41, and Sarah, Coppin State already with more points than in that season opener from last year. What can they kind of do to sort of finish the job here. They seem to be losing a little bit of footing here in the second quarter, but still up nine. Yeah, first two offensive possessions definitely didn't go Coppin State's way. Two turnovers on offensive fouls, not something you want to see. But to them, they're already starting off shooting, you know, 60% coming into this half. So just keep a good job on that shot selection. Don't necessarily take a shot right off the back and work it in like we see now with Layla Lawrence. She's been impressive so far, obviously not being able to put that back in just now. But don't be afraid to work that ball in. Make Leah Tukane and Ayadel work. Coppin State has come up empty on their first four possessions here in this third quarter. Pitt outscoring the Eagles 7-0 here in quarter number three so far. And we definitely see Pitt do a better job uh, defensively with the pressure, getting a little bit up further, extending those guards a little bit further past the three-point arc so they're not getting those wide open looks. Kane, a lot of contact down low, no whistle though as the ball batted around a little bit. Washington's on it, and they'll call a jump. Possession arrow goes in the favor of the Panthers. Bit of, bit of jostling there on the loose ball. It seems like Pitt's definitely come out with a bit more of an edge here to start half number two. Yeah, definitely. You can see the intensity a little bit more, which is shows, shows a lot about Coach Tori Verdi and this Pitt squad. Obviously, the first half not going how they want, but going into the locker room, getting a game plan and adjusting and coming out saying we got this rather than coming out, you know, and starting continuing where they left off. Something Coach Verdi's really emphasized in this first couple months of his tenure at Pitt is not having to teach things like effort and showing that you're ready to play all the time. And Pitt has certainly embodied that so far in the first three minutes and change of quarter number three. Possession arrow now goes the other way with compensate after the jump. Still looking for their first points of the second half. Here's Gray. Washington's on Blackstone. Goes to her right, fights through contact, and that's going to be a block on Marley Washington's. Something you notice just immediately upon looking at the court. Coppin State a lot bigger of a team than Pitt on the floor right now. I'm trying to take advantage of that. Look at some noise down though, like you mentioned with Lawrence and Jenkins. Lead back up to 10 as Blackstone makes, makes the first of two. She continues to struggle a little bit here from the free throw line. Now seven for 12. and trying to work the pick from King up high. As that one poked away from her and out of play. That's something we've seen a good amount of so far, Sarah. These pit guards getting down low and Coppin State's defending, doing a really nice job of sort of swarming them and poking that ball loose a lot of the time. Yeah, I like the strength of the pit guards and the confidence taking that ball to the hoop because you never know what driving can draw, right? You can get the dish out and Pitt is strong in the rebounding category, right? So those guards figuring, I'm gonna take this to the hoop, I'm gonna go strong, I'm gonna draw the foul, and if I don't draw the foul and I miss, I have Leah du Tukane and Ayadel right underneath, ready to get the ball. King up to 10 points. Tied for the team high with Malcolm, who's only played 15 minutes. Long two there, misses from Jenkins. And as Malcolm it comes down with the rebound and Pitt goes the other way down eight. Inside, King, really nice passing there from the Panthers. Really nice job there, recognizing Malcolm taking the floor, recognizing they had the numbers, a little three-on-one situation there. Battle could have easily tried to put that back up, but she noticed one more pass will do the job and found a wide open Leah to King. Ball distribution much better in the second half of play so far for the Panthers, who now trail by just six. Inside, Lawrence. She can't get that one to go. And Pitt, another defensive stand here in the second half. And I like the matchup there. You had Layla Lawrence against Aislinn Malcolm and Mar Marley Washington taking a stand underneath the basket there and getting the turnover for Pitt. Pitt outscoring Coppin State 11-1 to so far in this second half of play. But 
The Eagles still lead 44-38. Four thirty-eight ball game here in the third quarter of play. Zach Gibby, Sarah Johnson here at the Peterson Event Center. Coppin State in that first half shot 60% from the field, but start 0 for 5 in the second half. Certainly a testament to that pit defense, Sarah. Yeah, they came out of the halftime. Whatever locker room talk Coach Bernie <laughs> gave them definitely worked out. Came out with a different energy. Had some great offensive, um, defensive stops, excuse me on Copen State and coming out strong offensively, sticking to what they know best, getting the ball underneath the basket, and letting Iodell and Leah King do their thing. Yeah, whatever Coach Verdi said in the locker room seems to have worked. Uh, thinking he wasn't handing out cookies or anything, but Iodell down low, and that one gets blocked. And you mentioned it earlier, Zach. Coach Verdi, his biggest thing is effort. He wants to see that hard work. You know, in his eyes, they come out, they give 110%. That's all he can ask of them. King, jumper, got it. Lead down to four. Leah Chikane's one of those silent leaders, huh? She yeah. doesn't, obviously growing up in a deaf household wasn't a lot of you know, discussion and conversations in her household. And so she plays a lot that way on the basketball court, a very silent leader, but she comes up in those big moments when Pitt needs it most. Leah to King, five for seven from the floor already, just six minutes into this third quarter of play. She's got 10 in the frame. Coppin State needs a bucket somewhere along the line here. They'll keep possession after the missed shot there, but Jermaine Woods' team losing a lot of momentum here in the second half. Hit on a 6-0 run in under two minutes. Blocked down low from King, rebound off the Rim and out as the shot clock was expiring. Now Pitt's going the other way, down just four. Outside Iadell. Malcolm works the pick from her. Back down low, Iadell fouled. This is a different Pitt team here in the second half. Yeah, good feed there by Malcolm. 
think she picked up her dribble just a little bit too early there. Might have had more of a lane if she continued on, but saw the mismatch with Ayadell underneath and fed it into her to send her to the free throw line. Lawrence back on for Hawthorne. As Ayadell will go to the line for two. This is the first. Cop instead State led by as much as 17 in that second quarter of play. We're up 41-24. And Iadell cuts it to a one possession game. Cop and State looking for their first points in nearly three minutes. Lawrence trying to make something happen with Blackstone. Outside, Staples, three off the mark. Washington's trying to go down the low to Iadell, but that one just gets away. Maybe a little bit early on that pass. It'll keep possession. Looks like Iadell thought they might not have for a second, but... Excuse me, no, they won't. Coach Verdi exchanging some words with the referee there. Yeah, I think you were right there, Zach. Just a little bit too quick for that pass from Marley Washington. So that's one that maybe a little bit of a floater trying to, you know, the hard chest pass through a couple girls just isn't going to happen. So we've had a few times so far from this pit offense. They've maybe gotten a little bit ahead of their skis at times. Seems like when they've slowed things down, they've had a lot more success. Coppin State still trying to get their first shot made from the field in this second half of play. Just over three minutes now in the third quarter. Battle on Staples. Lawrence working on Iadell, and she is fouled. Iadell picks up another. That'll be her third. Lawrence takes her first trip to the free throw line of the afternoon. She makes her first, is now up to 11 points, and has that cop and state lead back out to four. Works very quickly from the free throw line and drills both of them. Five point lead for the Eagles here. Just over two and a half to play. King working on Lawrence. Doing a nice job on defense there is Lawrence and she gets the takeaway. Saw her check back into the game to sort of provide that presence down low and she does just that there. Malcolm coming up high to guard Staples. Seven on the shot clock now. Blackstone driving on King. That one goes, and she gets the blocking foul to boot. I'd like to see that one again. Oh, that was a little... Looked like King might have been set down low there. Yeah, she ha definitely had the time to get set. Not sure, so short. Saw her knees buckle a little bit, so she might have been moving at the last second there, but good job by Copen State taking it to the hoop, knowing that the shot clock was about to expire. Blackstone forcing the issue down low. As you mentioned, that shot clock was winding down quickly. And Coppin State gets a big three-point play out of it to get that lead back up to eight. Whistle blows. Not sure what they're calling here exactly. It's going to be a foul on battle, it looks like. Again, another off-ball foul on the Panthers. Excuse me, that'll be on Coppin State with Staples on the foul, the other number one. And Pitt now in the bonus will get a couple free throws here. Yeah, Coach Woods looks to be a little confused with that call as <laughs> well. Could have gone either way. You saw it kind of push off back and forth. It ends up being on Staples. I think Pitt might have thought it was on them too. It looked like a few of them were pretty frustrated at the call for a second, but get a couple free throws here with Malcolm, who misses the first and hits the second. 
Yeah, I would love to see Pickett a nice defensive stop here as the quarter continues to wind down. Obviously coming out to a really great start here in this third quarter and want to head into the fourth quarter with that narrow margin and showing how hard they worked this quarter. Came out real strong, but haven't made a shot from the floor in the last three minutes. Blackstone on Washington again. Working through the contact, that one off the rim and out. Still a loose ball. Coppin State recovers, and Iadell will get the foul. So you know, it'll be on King. Yeah, now you're running into a little bit of foul trouble. Those are the type of fouls, those off-ball fouls that are really hard um, to swallow just because now you have Iadell and Kane both with three fouls heading into the fourth quarter. Pitt with not a ton of depth there in that front court. Certainly might be an issue down the road here in the quarter number four. Lawrence trying to make a move again and another foul call down low. Iadell picks up another. Yeah, and looks like Gabby Hutcherson's probably going to come in right now, sub in for Iadell, having to go to the bench with that fourth foul. Iadell, someone we mentioned so valuable there on the glass from a rebounding perspective, and she's forced to sit here in the final minute 23 of this third quarter. Yeah, and Gabby Hutcherson checking in, obviously listed as a forward, and she's got all that height, but usually you see her kind of hang out around the key a little bit more. Shoots the three ball pretty well. So we'll see hopefully if she can get in there and help Leah Tukane in the rebounding department. Lawrence still nails from the line. Four for four on the afternoon. And right when you thought Coppin State lost a lot of that momentum, their lead is back up to nine. King through contact and gets the bucket to go. Yeah, the pitch bench. Pit bench, excuse me, loves that. Leah Tukane just taking over, taking command, knowing she has her girl one-on-one, -on -one, not afraid of Layla Lawrence, and taking it up and getting a much-needed basket for Pitt as the third quarter winds down. 12 points in the third quarter for Leah King. She's got 16 on the game. Completes the three-point play there, and Pitt's back within six. Yeah, Leah Tukane nuts slowing down in the scoring department, coming into this game, averaging just above 16 points per game, now with 17 on the day. Blackstone with 12 on the shot clock. Lawrence back out, Blackstone, big three, that one off the mark. Offensive rebound though, inside with Jenkins, and she gets that one to go. She just snuck in there, unguarded, got the easy put back, something Pitt just can't let up. King the other way, looking for the counter. She can't get that one. Four second difference between shot clock and game clock. As Coppin State back out to an eight point lead. Gray holds. No real hurry here. Now with seven on the shot clock. Blackstone driving. Nice pass down low. Lawrence can't get that one to go, though. And back out to the Panthers with two and one on the shot clock. Malcolm needs to get a shot up. She does, and it goes! Aislinn Malcolm at the buzzer. Great job there by Aislinn. Not scoring Coppin State 20 to 10 in the third quarter. Yeah, Pitt came out in that th third quarter exactly how they needed to to stay in this game. King trying to get the quick bucket coming out, and Hutcherson comes in and gets the land to go. Love that for Gabby Hutcherson. Coming in out of nowhere, unmarked, grabbing that rebound and putting it right back up for Pitt. Bella Perkins back into the game as well for the Panthers. Only played 14 minutes so far today. Yeah, with Rapalucci Iadell on the bench in foul trouble with four fouls, you need someone like Bella Perkins, even though she's a guard. She's coming in Omers, getting 10 rebounds a game. You need that presence out there to hopefully get some rebounds for Pitt and some second chance opportunities. Blackstone once again off the mark from three. She's now one for six from beyond the arc. Yeah, and with Blackstone, she's a very talented guard, right? We've already shown she's got the height coming in at six foot. 
she's already proven it. Obviously, she's been at the free throw line a bunch today. That's not her shot, right? Take that ball to the hoop. Go on your one-on-one -on -one matchup. As we see Gabby Hutcherson just missed the jumper, but a rebound for Leah Tukane. Perkins open three off the mark again from her. Offensive rebound again to Leah King. Stop me if you heard that one before. And this is exactly what Pitt needs to do, right? Marley taking charge, bringing the ball back out, knowing that you just got a third opportunity there on offense. Let's reset your offense, work the ball around, and get that final shot. A couple substitutions here. Staples and Lawrence back on for Coppin State. Blackstone and Jenkins out. And they get a kickball violation there, so Pitt gets a fresh 20 to work with. Malcolm up high, Perkins, top of the key, off the mark again from her from deep. Good look there, great ball execution by Pitt. Perkins just couldn't come up with the three-point shot, but I like the idea there. Perkins one for five from three. And a careless turnover there. That pass from Gray just into the feet of Hammond. Yeah, and I honestly think Copen State shooting how they did in the first half kind of helped light a spark under this pit defense. Shooting the three ball so well as Copen State did, moving that defense up further in that key. And we've gotten some, Pitt's gotten some turnovers so far this second half. They with 13 points off of turnovers. Coppin State with 15. Perkins, nice move to dribble in. Back out, Washington takes one step and the jumper off the mark. It's like a promising possession there for the Panthers for a second, but the deficit stays at four with seven and a half to go. Here's Buckner, outside, three, off the mark there from Hammond, who went scoreless in that third quarter after 15 in the first half. Perkins with speed the other way. Washington's on that baseline again, and she's fouled. End-to-end -end action here in the fourth quarter. Perkins looks a little shaken up, maybe grabbing that shoulder. Piddle inbound. Here with Washington's. on the shot clock. Pitt has missed their last four from the field. King with 10. Driving, free throw, jumper, rolls out. Another defensive stand here. Just two total points here in the second, or the fourth quarter. Pitt with both of them, but Coppin State doing a nice job of locking down defensively there once again. Lawrence trying to get some space down low, and they wanted to travel, but it's going to be a foul on Marley Washington. That's her third. One of three Panthers with at least three fouls. Her and King both have three, and then Ayadel with those four still on the bench for the Panthers. Yeah, I'm assuming we'll see her check back in sooner rather than later in this fourth quarter. Lawrence continues to be money from the free throw line. Five for five now. Her cadence is so quick from the stripe, too. She just takes it and shoots and once again drills it. Efficient, too. Sure. Saves a lot of that. You see a lot of these players get up now and take four or five dribbles. Lawrence just gets the ball and puts it in. And I get it. They have their cadence. They have their routine that they've been doing probably since grade school. <laughs> but like Layla Lawrence, keeping this game going at the free throw line. I dig it. Her cadence is pop it and shoot and just... Keep moving. Six for six from the line for, for her. Hoppin State up six here. With six and a half to go. Blackstone driving. Intercepted there by Washington. She's got Perkins on her left. She'll just take it to the hoop herself, though. That one a little bit strong off the backboard and comes back out for Coppin State. Yeah, I like the thought there by Marley Washington to take it. Um, Bella Perkins wasn't quite open, rather than force a turnover right at the last second, just couldn't finish. 
Lawrence on King. Lawrence the fadeaway. Nice defense there from Leah 2 King. Really nice defense. Perkins now with room off to Malcolm. And a timeout coming here from Tori Verdi. Hit down six here in the fourth quarter of play. 59-40, 55-49, excuse me, with 5.47 to play. Fifty-five forty-nine here at the Peterson Event Center as we head down the stretch. Zach, give me Sarah Johnson here courtside. And Sarah, we've seen some stretches in this game where there's been a lot of offense. The fourth quarter, not one of those instances. Two-two aside, almost five minutes in, these defenses really locking things down down the stretch. Yeah, you look at each of the first three quarters, and one of the two teams has scored at least twenty <laughs> points in each of those quarters so far. Off to a slow start here in the fourth quarter. Really, both teams on the defensive side proving strong. Washington's misses again from close in. She's done that a few times so far, getting down low and just unable to finish at the rim. Coppin State stays up six. Blackstone. Driving on Perkins. Off the glass and out. Perkins trying to get the rebound. Did she step on the baseline? She did. So it'll stay with Coppin State. Really good defense, though, there by Bella Perkins on Blackstone. Obviously, a really good strong driver to the hoop in Blackstone and Bella Perkins did a good job giving her enough space but not too much space and unfortunately just couldn't come up with that ball. Staples guarded high by Washington's. Lawrence leaves for Blackstone now to Gray. Three as the shot clock was expiring there from Hammond. Call a shot clock violation. We were talking about during the break, Hammond was five for six in that first half from three point, and then doesn't get another shot from the field until here in the fourth quarter. They're a little strange that they're going away from the hot hand there. 
Yeah, like we said to coming into today's game, the three-point shooting isn't necessarily Copen State's strong suit, but when you had someone like Hammond shooting lights out. And the block there goes on Washington. Strong contact down low. Yeah, that's a questionable call there. Marley Washington definitely was moving, but... Hard contact. Yeah, Greg kind of leaned in with the shoulder there on Washington. So I think that could have gone either way, but unfortunately going in Coppin State's favor. Washington's now with four as well. She'll come out. So the three guards now in the game battle Perkins and Malcolm for the Panthers. And I've liked, I've liked what I've seen out of Aaron Battle so far. For a freshman, she's very calm, cool, and collected, right? You haven't seen a ton of emotion from her but has stayed confident in these late game situations. So eager to see how she finishes out this fourth quarter with Marley being on the bench in foul trouble. Rim's got a lid on it right now for both teams. No one scored in almost three minutes of play. That'll stay with the Panthers after it was poked away from King. Panthers haven't scored in five and a half. Coppin State had the last points in the game about two and a half minutes ago. So certainly a defensive battle down the stretch. And right now that's a losing battle for the Panthers as they're down six. Malcolm with just under four and a half to go, leaves for battle. Hutcherson, no. Tried the fadeaway there from that low block, but once again, the Panthers come up empty. Staples driving. Here's Lawrence. Good ball movement there from Coppin State. Hammond the three, and that one misses again. I tell you what, I haven't seen a stretch in a basketball game where there's been this little scoring in a long time. And like you said it perfect there, Zach. Great ball rotation there. That was a great offensive sequence for Coppin State. Couple opportunities they had to shoot the ball, they shoot the ball they passed up on for the next best opportunity, and you had a hot hands like Hammond get the ball with a wide open three and just couldn't finish. Offensive rebound, King to the basket. <laughs> Leah Tu King back to the line, trying to complete the three point play and make it a one possession game. We see Ayadel checking back in. Three and a half minutes left to go in this fourth quarter with four fouls. But once again, Leah Tu King stepping up for this pit team. Just pit second field goal of this fourth quarter, and it's a big one. And we've talked about King too, being an undersized forward, right? She doesn't compare to the Elizabeth Kitley, some of the other forwards in this ACC conference, but Leah Two King showing in other ways that it's not all just about height. I can go in there, I can grab buckets, I can grab rebounds, and really make a name for herself on this court. Another double-double for her, 20 points, 11 rebounds for King. Coppin State looking for an answer. Blackstone off to Buckner, driving off the glass and in a big bucket there for the Eagles. Yeah, unfortunate there. Perkins got mixed up there in the switch, fell to the ground, leaving a wide open lane for Buckner. King to Malcolm, Ayadel on the outside. Perkins, long jumper, yes! Bella Perkins up to seven. She needed one to go down and she sees one there and cuts that deficit back down to three. Little push off there from Blackstone. No call there on Perkins though. Yeah, definitely a push off there. You could see the hand fully extending, but ref letting them play it out here. Gray gets that one taken away from her. The other way now goes King with numbers. Perkins on her right. King takes it to the rack herself. And we got a one-point ball game. Great job there. That all stems from Aslan Malcolm there coming up with a nice turnover and steal on the defensive end. And then seeing eyes immediately up the court finding Leah Tukane. Pitt down one with just over two minutes to go here in the fourth quarter of play.
57-56 ball game here in the fourth quarter at the Peterson Event Center. Coppin State trying to come on the road and pull off the upset. Pitt clawing back into this game in the fourth quarter. And Sarah, we've got a good one down the stretch here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I'm sure all these students are very excited that they <laughs> their money's out worth on school today, getting in on the chance and making this a great crowd for these Pitt Panthers as they look to come back against Coppin State. Really good job on the previous possession before we went to the break with Aslan Malcolm coming up with a huge steal for Pitt underneath the basket and then having the awareness immediately to pick her head up and launch the ball down the floor for Leah Two King. And there's Malcolm with the takeaway. She's four for five from the field. As you mentioned, 13 points as well. Has been a fantastic presence up top for the Panthers, especially in this second half of play. And now Pitt within one with a minute and a half to go. Malcolm, Perkins, the three is off the mark. Perkins once again coming up short from deep. That's a similar shot we saw her take in the stretch run of that Yale game, but can't get that one to go down, and Pitt still facing a deficit with a minute 27 to go. Like you said, Zach, not a situation that Bella Perkins hasn't been in before so far early in this season. Two games coming down to the wire so far for Pitt, and she's come up in these big moments. So she's just got to keep shooting the ball, and hopefully those ones will fall. Coppin State with four turnovers in the last five and a half minutes. Losing some ground here on the Panthers with just over a minute to play. Huge possession here for the Eagles. Blackstone driving, and she is fouled. Yeah, Blackstone there doing what she does best, taking that ball to the hoop, seeing sort of the mismatch there with Leah Tukane, guard skills on a forward. Leah Tukane played pretty good defense there, but unfortunately picking up the foul, sending Blackstone to the line, who has been kind of hit or miss today at the free throw. Started off slow, but she's been stronger as of late. As you mentioned, very up and down from the charity stripe for her. She's 8 for 13 on the afternoon. Substitutions coming for both sides. Washington's back into the game for Pitt. And Buckner back in for the Eagles. Couple of huge free throws coming up here for Blackstone. Gets the front. Yeah, and I wouldn't be shocked here if Copen State puts on a little bit of pressure here if Blackstone's able to put this basket in. That one rolls around and drops. First points in over two minutes for Coppin State comes at a huge time, and that leads back up to three as we hit the one-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Washington to the top of the key, directing traffic for Iadell. And they put their best defender in Mozzie Staples on As Aislinn Malcolm, knowing that Malcolm is the best three-point shooter on the court right now. Perkins, three, off the mark. A couple of threes missed down the stretch for Bella Perkins and Pitt still down three with just over 30 to play. Whistle blows and will get a timeout. Coach Verdi not happy about something. Looks like they wanted a 10 second violation. Um, they got the timeout. Obviously, Copen State got the timeout in, but it looked like Moashinitz and Coach Verdi did not think that they got that timeout in before the 10 second violation. Coach Verdi shaking his head there. Sarah, while well, we got a second to breathe a little bit in this fourth quarter of play, you get 31 seconds left. Bell Perkins missing the three. And on the defensive side of things for Pitt, obviously you need to stop here. What's sort of the mindset here going forward with 31.2 left to play? Yeah, obviously if you're Pitt, like you said, you need a defensive stop here. Not looking to foul. Don't want to send them to the line if you don't have to. Just playing strong defense here. Copen State looking to just kind of hold the ball. So they're not going to be looking to score here. So Pitt trying to get a steal here to turn the ball in transition and make it up the court. Obviously, Pitt looking for a three, and Bella Perkins got a sh good shot, shot off there, just couldn't finish. And like I said, Copen State playing strong defensively, putting their best defensive player in Staples on Malcolm, our best three-point shooter. First quarter when it was four to three. This game has been all cop and state, but the Panthers capturing momentum back here down the stretch. But will they have enough time to make up that three point deficit? Cop and state will have possession here coming out of the timeout. Yeah, possession here at half court for cop and state. Obviously, Pitt bringing up that pressure, not sitting back on this cop and state squad, hoping to maybe get a steal here on the inbound. Pitt three players on the floor now with four fouls. Those are. King, Washington, and Iadell. 
Heavy press here for the Panthers on the inbound, and we're going to call a kick ball, so we'll do it again. It'll be Staples to inbound. Conversation here with the referees and Marley Washington as well. They will stay in possession here. Looks like they're running a set play here on the inbound, and they get it into Gray with 29.8 to play. Gray. Washington goes down, and they're going to call a jump. Possession arrow in favor of the Eagles. Coach Verde looking like he wanted the offensive foul there as Washington fell over. Perkins yeah, no. also. Yeah, it looked like Gray just got her feet tangled up. Didn't look like anything malintent there. But Leah Tukane trying to come up with the jump ball. Coppin State without a field goal in the last two minutes and 46 seconds of play. We'll get another timeout here. So if you're Coppin State off the inbound here, obviously you got to think Pitt trying to play a high press pressuring that inbound. It looks like the officials are going to the table here. Not quite sure what they're looking at. It looked to be a jump ball, so I'm not sure maybe if they got the possessions um, mixed up a little bit here, but we have an official coming over to tell us. And it's a timing situation, so you can see if they put time back on the clock here. 20.8 now as it stands. Yeah, it looked like when that first, um, when Coppin State first tried to get the possession in there um, and ended up being a kickball by Marley Washington, it looked like the one referee was looking up at the clock. Maybe they let the clock go a little bit too long there on the immediate dead ball, hoping maybe they could get some minutes back or seconds back on the clock here for Pitt. I know that's what they're hoping for in this situation. It's tough to tell a lot of those times in those scrambles on the floor when that ball was really tied up, but that's what they'll take a look at now. Talked about Coppin State shooting over 50% for a lot of the game. They're back down not to 38%, right where Pitt is as well. So that kind of tells the, the story of this game so far. Very even, especially heading into the second half. It was all Coppin State early, but Pitt making a charge late. We'll go over some stats now. With Leah King in the, leading the way with 22 points. And then on the Coppin State side of things, Hammond and Blackstone with 15 apiece. And Lawrence, the team lead there with 16. Yeah, and definitely a lot of, obviously, Coppin State coming a little bit back down to earth there with the field goal percentage. But then Pitt doing a really good job on the defensive side, putting some more pressure on Coppin State so they're not getting wide open baskets. So things will stay the way they are. 10 seconds on the shot clock, 20.8 on the game clock. Pitt needs a stop here. Staples at the top. Some room down low with Blackstone, and that one goes out of play, and the Panthers will take possession. So an Aaron pass there. A huge turnover gives Pitt the ball back with 16.7 to go. Yeah, that's exactly what Pitt needed in that scenario. It was a nice look by Coppard State to try and float that ball underneath to Blackstone. Uh, Blackstone, excuse me, but just couldn't quite get the pass on target. Pitt having a big possession coming out with just 16 seconds left. So obviously they're going to be some pressure by Coppin State. Not looking to foul, but not looking to let Pitt have an easy transition up the court. So if you're Pitt, you can try and get the quick bucket here. Obviously looking for a three to tie the game, but you can get the two and then maybe hope to foul on the other end of things. But it's just a matter of how you want to play it for Coach Verde. You got some three-point shooters out there on the floor in Perkins and Malcolm especially. Struggled a little bit from beyond the arc today, though. Three for 14, and that's kind of been the tail of the tape all season for the Panthers, shooting just above 20% from beyond the arc. So really a, a, a decision to make here for Tory Verde and his squad with 16 to go. And that's why I'm glad we're sitting yeah. here, Zach, <laughs> and not on the bench there with the pit staff. Because like you said, really tough scenario. Obviously, the three is kind of the ball you want to go with, right? You want to set up a play design. I'm sure that's what they're working on now to set up a play for either Bella Perkins or Aislinn Malcolm to get that three-point shot off. But Leah Tukin, 22 points on the board. You'd like to think set up a quick play for her, maybe get a quick two-pointer or even maybe an and one that could turn this game around for Pitt. So we're interested to see how they come out with the ball here. 
a big spot in the game and really in the season for the Panthers. They've struggled in this non-conference schedule as of late, trying to rebound with a win here at home against the Coppin State team that has come into Pittsburgh and looked really strong throughout the day. Malcolm to inbound. Washington's now with 15 to go. Perkins, three in the corner. That one off the glass and out. Rebound goes to Iadell, though, down low, and he gets taken away, though, by Lawrence with six seconds to go. Panthers have to foul with four and a half left, and Bella Perkins once again missing a big three. That was how they designed the play, right? Interesting, interesting choice to have Malcolm take the ball out, but definitely they had her take the ball out, get to Marley. Malcolm tried to shoot across, but Staples, obviously, best defensive player out here for Copen State, guarded Malcolm pretty tight there. Bella Perkins, they, they got the they got the basket, right? Just a little bit of pressure on it, but she got a good look at it and just couldn't quite finish. What's going on in that last play? Like you said, that was certainly a design play to try to get Perkins the ball on the outside. Didn't have a ton of room to work with, though. Really good defense from Coppin State coming out to the perimeter and making a play there defensively on Perkins. And now they're four seconds away from a huge upset on the road. 59-56, still a three-point lead for them. They knocked down a couple free throws here. In a really good spot to come away with a win. You know, and if you're the Pitt Panthers here, obviously still hoping something happens in these next four and a half seconds to turn the game in your favor. But the resilience, that's how you kind of obviously non-conference game, you'd like to come out of this in front of your home crowd with the win. But taking obviously how they went down at halftime, not doing so well in the first half, coming back, making this a competitive game, I think that says a lot for Tori Verdi and his squad this season. Perkins, Malcolm, Iadell, King, and Battle out for the Panthers with Staples, Hammond, Gray, Blackstone, and Lawrence for the Eagles with four and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Inbound coming from Gray. Pressure there from Iadell. Allen poked out of play with 3.2 now left on the clock. So a strong defensive play there, but you burn about a second and a half for the Panthers. Inbound once again goes to Staples and she will try and run it out. She's fouled though with 1.1 seconds to go. And we'll have a couple free throws to try and seal it. Coppin State in the bonus. Pitt still with one timeout left as well. So they'll, they'll use that assuming they get the rebound if Staples misses this first shot here. Could all but do it here if Staples makes the front end. She does. Four point game now with 1.1 to go. As Mozzie Staples drills the second as well. Little stare down there for Staples. Not sure if she's staring at the pit squad or the children in attendance there, but. Making the free throws when it mattered most, sealing this game pretty much for Coffin State here. And if you're Coffin State, I'm feeling really good about this win. Now coming off, obviously they played Syracuse back on November 15th, 80 to 47 loss. So not a great feeling for them, but coming back with the most recent win against Florida International, and now another win in their belt under Pitt in a big ACC game. And Sarah, this is a team that was eight and 22 last season. You play Pitt in your season opener, you lose by 15 and it's just really shown the growth of this team in a year. I mean, they have come in here, granted, not the strongest second half. They had some moments there where it really looked like they were going to start to fall by the wayside a little bit when it comes to shooting. But they held strong on defense down the stretch, and that's why they're going to come away with a win here today in Pittsburgh. Right, and they stuck to the game plan, right? First half, they shot great, 60%, and then also from the three. But then stuck to their game plan in the second half, right? Didn't try to do too much. Stuck to their defensive game plan, worked the ball in, and it paid off for them. And then for Pitt, 